Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. I pray that you are well. I pray that all is well. I love that song, By the Blood of Jesus, because I don't think people really understand how powerful coming in the blood, breaking by the blood, fighting by the blood. We often try to do things in our natural ability. We try to do things in not understanding that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty. They are by, by the pulling down of strongholds. We're not fighting a natural battle. We're not fighting a fleshly battle. When you feel upset, when you feel sad, when you feel angry, when you feel jealous, when there's demonic delay in your life, when there's a, a, a when you see that you're not being favored by anyone. Every time you turn around, you know your family don't favor you. They treat you, you know. Any your kind of way friends treat you any your kind of way you get into relationships you're not having favor with anybody nobody is regarding you for who you are when God said I give you favor with me and man and when you trying to figure out oh, why I always get the short end of the stick I'm never the one that's picked out I'm never the one that's chosen you got to understand I got to break this thing by the blood of Jesus. It's not by my natural abilities. It's not, it's not by my natural name. It's not by my natural understanding. It is by the blood of Jesus. And so we understand the power that's in the blood of Jesus, that we're able to call that out. I love to call that out and pray. I know some people feel like, okay, that's old school. No, by the blood of Jesus is some things that need to be broken off of my life. And so I just love to just listen to some warfare type of music. But Father, we just come to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. First of all, thanking you for today, Lord God. Thanking you for allowing us to wake up on this morning, Father God. You are worthy, oh God. You are Alpha and you are Omega, oh Father God. We we just uh, we just lift up your name, Father God. We just want to give you reverence on today, Lord God. Thank you for being the great I am. Thank you for being the Prince of Peace and the Lord of Lords in our life. Father God, thank you for being Abba. Thank you for being a way maker, oh God. Thank you, Lord God, for thinking and not robbery that we woke up this morning, Father God, in our right mind, Lord God. We give you glory, oh God, for allowing our foot to hit the floor in the name of Jesus, oh God. We ask, Father God, that you order our steps on today. You order our steps on this week in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We ask, Father God, that you bring us clarity in our mind where there is confusion, Father God. We ask, Father God, that you bring us peace, Lord God, where there may be torment, where there may be worry, blanket us with peace in the name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, help us to be ye not anxious for anything but in prayer and supplication that we submit our request onto you, Father God. Don't let us be anxious about tomorrow, anxious about what will happen in the future, anxious about the promises of the Lord, because your word says that the promises are yea and amen. So we know those things are going to come to pass. Now we just have to wait. But Father, we thank you that we will not get weary in the wait, Father God. We thank you that you're sending a gust of wind, Father God, that we can run this way, Father God. Don't let us be uh, weary, Father God. Don't let us get weary in well doing, Lord God. Don't let us faint in the name of Jesus. But Father God, I ask that you lift up the believers right now, that you be a gust of wind underneath our wings in the name of Jesus, Father God. I pray, Father God, from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet, Father God, that you pour out anointing on us, that you pour out glory on us, that you pour out in the name of Jesus, oh God. I pray, Father God, that you begin to speak to us in the midnight hour, Lord God. That you begin to speak to us concerning our life, Father God, so that anywhere that we made a wrong turn or we're at a dead end or we hit a pothole, Father God, that we can get clear, concise instructions from the God of all God, the King of all kings in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you allow everything in our life to become clear. Give us an aha moment. Let a light bulb come on in the name of Jesus, Father God. Don't let us wander in the dark. Don't let us wander, Father God, without a lantern unto our feet, Lord God, which is your Holy Ghost. We ask, Lord God, now for the Holy Ghost to guide our footsteps in this season. As we are in the fourth quarter, Father God, allow the Holy Spirit to guide our footsteps if he has not, if he has not been doing it all year, especially on this last quarter. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide our footsteps. Father God, we come against demonic delay in the name of Jesus. Where the enemy has itched up, where the enemy has held us down, Father God, where the enemy has put a stumbling block, a roadblock, where there has been demonic delay, Father God, we don't mind waiting, but Father God, 
God, there has been demonic delay in the lives of believers. So, Father God, we apply the blood of Jesus to break the stronghold of demonic delay. We apply the blood of Jesus to break the obstacle, the stumbling block of demonic delay, where we should have been somewhere two years ago, where something should have unfolded five months ago, where the phone call should have happened, Father God, eight days ago. Father God, we come against wherever the area in our life that has been held up, Father God, by the Prince of Persia, wherever it has been held up, Father God, we break it by the blood of Jesus. We ask, Father God, that you trace it in the name of Jesus and show us where we need to apply our prayers, where we need to apply our fasting so that prayer and fasting together can apply dynamite to that obstacle in our role, Father God, because, Father, you said that it was ours. You said that we can have it. You declared and decree and we received it. So, Father God, if it is not made manifested here on earth, Father God, we come by the blood of Jesus against the demonic delay in our life. And we ask, Father God, through the help of the Holy Spirit, through the help of your angels, the angelic assistant, God of the angel armies, that you will help, uh, help us fight these battles, Father God. Don't let us continue to go to battle in a natural sense, Father God. Help us to put the full armor of God on understanding that we have to have the breastplate, Father God. We got to have the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth as we fight. We ask that you ask that you put on the full armor, Father God, so that when we go in battle, Lord God, that we will be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy in battle, Lord God. And so, Father, we ask, Lord God, that you equip us in our mind, equip us in our mind to understand our stance as a kingdom citizen, our stance as an heir to the throne, and our stance as sons and daughters. If we are sons and daughters, which you don't even have gender, Father God, so we're really all just sons. We're our sons, Father God. We have to understand our rightful position. We have to understand how we fight, how we lay hold of things, how we come against things, Father God. Help us to not be weak, Lord God. Help us to understand our positioning and our authority that you've given us from the foundations of the earth, Father God. Help us to be bold. That we will start coming up against these enemies, Father God, that's trying to make themselves seem like Goliath, that's trying to make themselves seem like they're bigger than us, that they're too big for us to fight. I don't care how long it's been in the bloodline. These demons, these giants, these strong men are trying to make your people feel like that they are bigger than them. But Father, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? In the name of Jesus, I don't care how long it's been in the bloodline. We come by the blood of Jesus against the demonic stronghold of delay. We come by the blood of Jesus against this spirit of suicide and and depression. We come by the blood of Jesus against this poverty that's been attacking the bloodline. We come by the blood of Jesus, Father God, against this infirmity that's trying to keep us bound in the name of Jesus. We come by the blood of Jesus that's trying to keep us tormented. The spirit that's trying to keep us tormented by the blood of Jesus. We send ambushments into the camp of the enemy by the blood of Jesus. Oh God, we come by the blood of Jesus to whatever is distracting us, oh God. Where distraction is trying to keep us, oh God, from destiny. We come by the blood of Jesus to eradicate every distraction in our life in the name of Jesus. We come by the blood of Jesus, Father God, to whatever spirit that's trying to keep us in singleness for where people can't even get a date. So when people tell them see we come against the strong man of the spirit spouse in the name of Jesus that's trying to keep all your people in cycles, oh God. That's trying to keep them in cycles of singleness, oh God. In cycles of not being able to get a date, oh God. We come by the blood of Jesus to pull down the stronghold of the, of the spirit spouse in the name of Jesus where there was a, a demon that came to them in their dreams for training themselves to help me Holy Ghost and where there was a spirit that came in the dream oh God that began to to, to poise, poise itself as a significant other or as an opposite sex and that came into agreement
keep them away, uh, to keep men away, and to keep women away. Uh, we apply the blood of Jesus uh, against that contract that was made in our dreams. Uh, may it be uprooted. Uh, may it be destroyed. Uh, may it be annihilated. Uh, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we come against uh, even our own words uh, where many of us thought that we were joking. Uh, and we said, oh, that's my work husband. Uh, oh, that's my work wife. Uh, and we began to prophesy uh, over our own situation, uh, not knowing that our words had power. Uh, and there was agreement that was established. Uh, and so now you're still single. Uh, and now you, you can't get a man. Uh, and now you can't get a woman because you're prophesied. Uh, and we came into agreement. But Father God, we eradicate. Uh, oh, Father God, we nullify. Uh, we render powerless. Uh, oh, God, the power that was in our tongue. Uh, we repent, Father God. We have no work husband. Uh, we have no work wife. Uh, wherever, whenever you declare and decree that that's our spouse, uh, we won't call anybody else. Uh, that's my that's my husband. That's that's my wife. Uh, that's wifey. Uh, that's my my boo. And no no God, we won't begin to label things. Uh, we won't begin to label people because we understand. Oh God, the power that's in the tongue, uh, the power in the agreement. Oh God, so Father, in the name of Jesus, we repent. Oh God, for saying we had a work husband, for saying we had a work wife. We repent, Father God the times, oh God, that we didn't wake up uh, and divorce and, de and denounce and renounce our dreams uh, where we came into agreement with certain things, oh Father God, and these things have become uh, a stronghold. These things have become an obstacle. These things have become a barrier to the things that you have promised us. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we render everything that you have not rooted in our life uh, powerless by the blood. We uproot everything, Father God, in our life uh, that you did not plant it there. By the blood of Jesus, let it be uprooted. By the blood of Jesus, Father God, let it be rendered powerless. We come up against every evil contract. Uh, we come against every evil agreement, Father God. Even the agreements that we made ourselves. Uh, there has been some agreements that was passed down. There was some agreement that was made in our dreams. Uh, there was some agreement that was made in our words. Uh, there was some agreement that was made in our actions. There was some agreements that was made in our disobedience. There was some agreements that was made in our unforgiveness. There was some agreements that was made in our lying tongue. There was some agreements that was made in our gossiping. There was some agreements that was made in our covetousness. There was some agreements that was made in our jealousy. But Father God, we come against it now as we ask for forgiveness of our sins, oh God. Everything known and unknown, oh God. Everything in thought and in deed, oh God. Everything in action and in plan, oh God. We ask for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. We call upon you, O oh God, the God of mercy and grace, asking that you bestow grace and mercy upon us even the now. As we lay down these sins, we can't think of them all, but as they come up, O oh God, we repent, we repent, we repent. We repent, we repent, we repent. We ask, Father God, that you send angelic assistance, O oh God, to help us fight these battles, to help us fight these strongholds. O oh God, we pull down the stronghold of anti-success in the name of Jesus, because according to your kingdom, oh God, according to our kingdom citizenship, success is our birthright. So it's wealth in the name of Jesus, oh God. So we thank you, Father God, that as we pour down that stronghold of anti-success, as we pour down that stronghold of poverty or lack, maybe we're not in full-blown out poverty, but living paycheck to paycheck or not having enough money to invest, not having enough money to multiply, not having enough money to give to the poor and to save and to give to whoever you need us and to pay the bills. So, Father God, we come against the lack that's in our life that have us, Father God, having seasons of abundance and then it dries out. That's a stronghold, having seasons of overflow, and then it dries out. We declare and decree in the name of Jesus that our well shall never run dry, that our bank account shall never run dry as we continue to do the work of the Lord. As we continue to live right, as we continue to fast and pray, as we continue to apply the principles outlined in your holy word, we declare and decree over our life that our financial well shall never run dry in the name of Jesus. We declare and decree over our life that our health well shall never run dry in the name of Jesus. We declare and decree over our life that our joy well shall never run dry in the name of Jesus. We declare and decree over our life that our peace well shall never run dry in the name of Jesus. We declare and decree over our life that our well of favor
favor. Our favor well shall never run dry in the name of Jesus, oh God. We declare and decree over our life uh, that our wealth to prophesy shall never run dry in the name of Jesus, oh God. We ask, Father God, that you gird us up on the inside. Uh, stir us up, stir us up, stir us up. Uh, stir us up, stir us up, stir us up. Uh, where there is a dead thing, oh God, stir it up. Uh, where there is a dormant thing, oh God, stir it up. Uh, oh God, stir up every gift on this line. Uh, oh God, stir up the seed of greatness on this line. Uh, oh God, stir them up, stir them up. Uh, let them take their rightful place as king. Uh, let them take their rightful place as queen. Uh, in the name of Jesus, oh God, uh, we prophesy to the industry, oh God, that we were born to overtake, we prophesy to the gates of that industry, and we say, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door, for the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, the Lord mighty in battle. We prophesy to the industry that you called us to, and we say, lift up your head, O ye gates, for the King of glory shall come in. We prophesy to the mountain you called us to, and we say, lift up your head, O ye gates. We prophesy to the marriage you called us to, and we say, lift up your head, O ye gates. We prophesy to the business you called us to, and we say, lift up your head, O ye gates. We prophesy to the city you called us to, and we say, lift up your head, O ye gates. We prophesy to the person that's going to be raised up to settle the matter in our life, and we say, lift up your head, O ye gates, for the king of glory shall come in. Who is is this King of Glory, the Lord Almighty, the Lord Mighty in battle? We prophesy to this uncircumcised Philistine in our life, and we declare and decree: Your power has been nullified. Your power no longer stands. We look square up with the enemy in our life, and we declare and decree: We should, we will rebuke you and send you back to the pits of hell. No longer will you run my life. No longer will you have me up pacing the floor. No longer will you have me wandering around the wilderness uh, when God has called me to the land of milk and honey, uh, when God has called me to the prosperous land, uh, when God has called me to the land of peace, uh, when God has called me to the land of joy. No longer will I sit in this messed up relationship uh, thinking that this is the best that I can get uh, because statistics and my friends and my family told me this was the best that I was going to ever get. And when I looked around, it was actually the best that I ever seen. But I prophesied to my life. Uh, I don't care if I got five children, four children. I don't care what I look like. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that God will save the best for me, that God will bring the best to me as I wait on the Lord and get my courage from the Lord and get my strength from the Lord. As I wait on the Lord, he will do the miraculous in my life. I prophesy over your life that as you wait on the King of glory, he won't fail you. He won't leave you disappointed. If you stop moving in haste, if you stop thinking everything need to happen tomorrow, as you wait on the Lord, he'll put some stuff on your table. He'll prepare your table in the presence of your enemy. But you got to wait on the Lord. You got to stop moving so fast. You got to stop moving all around. You got to get your emotions up under some control. You got to stop letting your emotions have you all over the place. Your emotions are leaving, leading to your actions. And your actions are leading to your acquisitions. And then you look around wondering, how did I acquire this thing that's causing me torment? How did I acquire this thing that's causing unpeace? How did I acquire this thing that causes setback? Because you didn't take your emotions up under subjection, up under submission. You can't let them run your life because that's where the enemy's playground is. He wants you to feel defeated. He wants you to feel pressed down. He wants you to feel oppressed and depressed. He wants you to feel like this thing is not going to happen. But I promise you, God is not like a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that where he has to repent. God is a man that is so he brings the rain and the snow down from heaven. When the word goes forth in your life, you just got to give it time, give it time, give it time. I dare you to tell somebody today when they ask you about something, I just got to give it time, give it time. Well, how's your marriage? I'm giving it time. I got to give it time. Are you going to conceive a child? Yeah, yeah, I got to give it time. I'm giving it time. What about the house you said you was going to have? I'm giving it time. I'm giving it time. I got to give God more time. He's, he's working on some things. I got to give God more time. He's aligning some things. I got to give God some time. Give God some time here. He gave you time. 
all the days that he waited on you while you was up in the club all the time he waited on you while you was laying on your back all the time he waited on you while you was in sin didn't he give you time he didn't send you to hell he didn't pull back the promises he waited patiently and now he's asking for you to do the same thing just give him time give him time just give him a little bit of time he's working give him a little bit of time he doesn't sleep he works all night up and through the night he has no days off he's working behind the scenes even when you don't see nothing working god is working even we don't see nothing happen he's aligning the dots because he's gonna get the glory out of your life he can't leave you broken and barren he gotta get glory out of your life he can't leave you isolated he gotta get glory out of your life he can't leave you in that debt place he gotta get glory out of your life he's working he's working he's working it's all working in your favor he's leaning in your direction he's breathing on your situation he's breathing on your situation he's leaning in your season but you got to go line up with heaven you got to make your life line up with heaven you got to call your thoughts to line up with heaven you got to call your behaviors to line up with heaven you got to call your actions to line up with heaven because how can god believe and how can god declare and decree a thing but you made yourself an enemy against god because you're siding with the devil every time you let torment continue to run rampant and you don't pull down that stronghold you're siding with the devil every time you allow your emotions to get the hold of you and you just lay there and cry and pity party instead of standing up saying who is this uncircumcised philistine of depression you better rise up david with your smooth stones and begin to go to war you can't wallow in these things because the enemy wants you to so that it gets in down in your subconscious mind to make you feel like i've been forgotten to make you feel like i've been forsaken to make you feel like god ain't gonna do nothing for me to make me feel to make you feel like look at everybody else getting blessed it's a lie from the pit of hell god has you on his mind god has you on his radar you just gotta give it time give it time if you can give the king of glory some time he gonna step in at the last minute right when you think nothing is going on while you sitting back doing your own thing why you and thank you holy spirit you should be consuming your time with uh, uh, your assignment anyway with pressing in on your assignment if you will consume yourself uh, with the thing of the lord you will be less worried about what hasn't happened yet if you were seeking first the kingdom of god if you had if you took time to pray and fast you took time to read the scripture you took time to answer your call you will be so busy working in the calling so busy working in purpose on purpose so busy trying to break chains you wouldn't even notice that this hasn't happened and that hasn't happened and then god can blindside you then you look up and like oh my god such and such is here oh my god this thing i've been praying for is here because you've been so consumed with the things of the lord you got to consume yourself with the things of the lord you got to consume yourself with the things of the Lord because the enemy will try to trust me. I'm not telling you from something I don't know. The enemy will try to make you feel forsaken. Will try to make you feel forgotten. Will try to make you feel like you done messed up. You're so, you're majoring on the minor. And the minor things won't be a thing of, 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 of it will be a thing of the old in just a matter of time. The thing that seems so big now will be a thing of old in a matter of time. And so because you can't control time, because you're not Alpha and Omega, you're not the beginning and the end, you cannot control the time, and you're going to have to live in time, then you need to consume your time with something else other than what has not happened for you yet. You need to consume your time with something else other than what has not happened for you yet. Because wouldn't it be a shame if God needs you to write a book during your time of singleness, or he needs you to write a book during your time of of lack and, and, and poverty, so that it can become a manual to when that thing hits your life, you can bring other people out. But you can barely recall the lessons because you're so focused on the pain, you're not dancing in the rain. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. What if God needs you to stop and smell? It may not be the roses. It may not be dandelions, but what if he needs you to just, just look around for a minute? I know what it feels like. I know what it looks like. But when there's a promise over your life, you know that what you're seeing is temporary. You, I know what it feels like. I know what it looks like. But when there's a promise over my life, I know that what I'm looking at, if it does not agree with what heaven told me, what I'm looking at is only temporary. So what I've got to do is train my mind to think on things 
above. Because when I allow my situation to impenetrate me so much that it cripples me to bed, that I don't want to get up in the morning. It cripples me to, I don't want to answer my phone and hang out with my friends. It cripples me to, I don't even want to go to church. I'm so crippled with disappointment. I'm so crippled with depression. I'm so crippled with sadness. I'm so crippled with these things that it, it helps you from focusing on the main thing. It clouds your judgment. It sends you into a spiraling. But these are things that you have to control at the root within your mind. And by doing this, reading the word will help you renew your mind. Being around Christians, like-minded people. When I say Christians, let me just say kingdom people, people who have a fear of the Lord, people who, who are people after God's own heart. Not people who just say I'm a title of a Christian, but being around that community of people so that you can be able to, it can carry you through the time where you're waiting, where you're able to see, oh, look at what God did over there for her. Oh, look at what God did for the man of God. Oh, look at what God did for that child. It can encourage you. So as you encourage yourself in the Lord, you also plant yourself intentionally around people and situations that can encourage you. And don't allow the enemy to make you get a spirit of jealousy when you're around these people by feeling like, oh, well, why is it them and not me? A lot of times what God will do will have you front and center to somebody's life so that you can see what's possible. But if you let the enemy take that and contaminate that seat, oh, help me, Holy Ghost, you can end up setting yourself back. I tell you all many times before, my friend Lord, we were in the same situation, $30,000 a year in Atlanta, Georgia. I introduced her to her husband, watched her front row, get fall in love, get engaged, get married, buy her dream house with a basement and a lot, have a baby one, have a baby two, have a baby three. They become millionaires. They get, and I'm still front row, still ain't get a date, still ain't got a baby, still ain't got a dollar, still can't get a burger or some french fries. Help me, Holy Ghost. But not one time did I let that turn my heart to jealousy because I knew the same God, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I knew the same God was able to do the same thing. I knew the same God was able. And what if God is checking your responses in this season? Can he find you responding well in the wait? Or does he find you murmuring and complaining like the children of Israel? Oh, when are we going to get some bread? We hungry. We thirsty. Moses, we, you should have left us in Egypt. We should have died in Egypt. Why did you bring us out here to die? Murmuring and complaining. Cursing your own atmosphere with your mouth. Cursing what the Lord has promised you with your mouth. It's not even an enemy against many of us. We are the enemy against the many of us. We are our own enemy because we keep siding with the enemy. We keep agreeing with the enemy. We keep agreeing with the statistics that everybody rolls out. We keep agreeing with what's going on in the world. And instead of inquiring of heaven to agree with the word of the Lord, my word I can't stand on. I can't even trust Kendra. She didn't did some things. She didn't say, I can't trust her. I got to inquire of the Lord. Because kids may say, oh, you'll never end up in the luxury market. I know you want to be a luxury real estate agent, but did you take notice? All of them are Caucasian. How are you going to sell luxury? I can't side with Kendra. I can't side with the statistics. I can't side with the fact that only 6% of, of real estate agents are African-American and of that 0.001 will ever go into, I can't side with that. I got to side with the word of the Lord. I got to inquire of the Lord so that I can side with the word of the Lord. The many reasons why we can't side with the word of the Lord because we have not inquired of the Lord. So how can we side with the thing we have not inquired of? How can we agree with the thing that we don't know? We don't even know what the Lord has to say about this because we didn't inquire of the Lord. We don't even know what God thinks about the situation. We don't even have his opinion in order to prophesy it, in order to pray it every time we wake up. We don't have the opinion of the Lord because we never inquired of him. We inquire of social media. We inquire of friends. We inquire of the opinions of others. We inquire of pastor and mentor. We inquire of people on Facebook and Instagram. We, we inquire of all these created beings, and we miss the creator. The one that has all the answers because he has the rule book. And we forgot to say, well, God, I know that statistically speaking, 
my mom grew up in, and she had food stamps. And right now, I got food stamps. The grandma was on food stamps. And, and, and based on my job, my position, I make 28000 at Walmart. I, I got these kids, all, all these things. And so generally speaking, I'm supposed to have this type of life. But let me inquire to know what did you have in mind, King of Glory, before the foundations of this earth, before I was conceived in my mother's womb, what did you have in mind? Because somebody along the way may have made a misstep that set back the whole bloodline, but I come by the blood of Jesus. I come as a repairer of the breach. I come on behalf of the name that's above every day. I know everybody else just submitted to what happened on the bloodline. I know everybody else just submitted to the alcoholism. I know everybody else just submitted to the infirmities in our body. I know we decide to live with this thing. But, you know, Lord, I'm going to inquire of you. Is this, is this of the Lord? Did you plant this here, oh, God? What is this in my life that I'm seeing? What is this? In my marriage, I'm saying, what is this? With my children, I'm saying, I got to inquire of you, Lord, because I need to know, should I pursue? And without fail, will I recover all? Let me inquire, Lord, so I don't know, should I pursue? Should I pursue? Because if I get a yes from you, I know that I will recover all without fail. So, Father, show me. What, what what did you plant and what did disobedience plant? Show me what did you plant and what did my murmur and complaining plant? Show me what did you plant and what did my grandma who went to go see that voodoo, voodoo priest in 1812 plant? What did you plant, Father God? Or what did my father plant when he committed adultery against my mother? Father God, I got to know what to go after. I got to inquire of you because I got to know who is this uncircumcised Philistine. I got to know who I need to square up with. I got to know who I need to get my slingshot and my rocks for because no longer will I sit here and just say, I guess this is just it. Everybody gets mad and divorced. No, I got to inquire of the Lord. Everybody just died of cancer at 68. No, I got to inquire of the Lord. Every man in the family... They, they get shot or, or go to prison by age 23. They don't, they're not here among the living by the age of 30. No, I got to inquire of the Lord so I can square it with the uncircumcised Philistine against my bloodline. So I can square it with the enemy against my last name. Because I know that the, the fight may have seemed like it was fixed because I didn't have the wisdom. And, and, and I would have perished for the lack of wisdom. But now that I got the wisdom, that this Christian thing, this Christian walk, is more than just gla- c- clapping in church. It's more than just running around and falling out. It's more than just accepting my life. To Christ. And me accepting Christ as my Savior was the beginning. It wasn't the ending, and I, I was able to go sit down and get a lollipop on the bench. When I accepted Christ as my Savior, that's when the real work begun. That's when the real war begun. So now I got to suit myself up. The only thing that's different for me coming out the world and coming up to Christ is now I got help. Now I got backup. Now I can call backup because all the heaven going to back me up. Now I can call backup because Michael, the, the, the archangel, he going to back me up. Gabriel going to send me a message. And then Michael going to fight with me. I was able to get backup. It, it, it didn't say that, that I was going to come into Christ and then all the battles were going to stop. To be honest, coming into Christ, the battles intensified itself because now I'm no longer a friend of the enemy. I'm no longer agreeing with hell. I'm now on the other side. And so now all of hell is going to try to attack me. But I got to understand that because I have backup and because my backup is heaven, that everything that I enter into, I already got the victory over. So now that I know that I already got the victory over everything that I enter into in battle, everything that comes up against me in battle, now I just need to know how to fight. Do I need to fight this thing on my knees? Do I need to fight this thing in fasting? Do I need to fight this thing by erasing all the men out of my phone because I can't stop having sex and that's the door that's you, that the enemy is using to keep me under his feet? Where, how do I need to fight this thing? Is it worship for me? It, 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 am I living in disobedience? Where are my war tactics at? How do, because I, I know the fight is fixed, right? Because I'm a, I'm a child of God. I know that I have backing for heaven. I know that there is going to be fights, but now I need to know how do I need to fight? Because what I've been doing is not working because I'm still defeated. What I'm doing is not working because I'm still broke. What I'm doing is not working because I'm still single. What I'm doing is not working because I'm still sick. 
What I'm doing is not working because I'm still bound in my mind. What I'm doing is not working because I'm still tormented. What I'm doing is not working because I'm still jealous. What I'm doing is not working because I'm still living in mediocrity. And the Lord called all these things me to prosper in all things. This is my soul prosper. The God, God says, if I seek ye first the kingdom of God, all of these things will be added unto me. I keep finding scripture that says all, 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 not this or that, not the marriage in the ministry, not 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 having healing or having a million. He said, I can have all these things. I all these things, all prosper, all, always, all things. And now I got to figure out what am I doing wrong that's not causing the all things? Where have I misstepped that's not causing the all things? Where do the enemy have a verdict? Where, where is he sitting in court saying, Lord, I got this against him. Lord, 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 I got this. You are covenant keeping God. You keep covenant just like the moon and the sun will always be in the sky at its appropriated time. That's a covenant. You're covenant keeping God. And here go, Lord. Here go my paperwork. Can you bring this to the judge? I got this right here up against them, Lord, right here in 1915. They were over here dancing around this uh, golden calf. Lord, here's, here's the evidence. Lord, just last week, she was over here gossiping about, here's what I got against. Lord, just the other day, he was on Instagram uh, talking to this girl. He committed adultery, not in action, but in his mind, Lord, this is what I got against them. And because they lack knowledge, they're perishing. So I can keep this right here against them. I can keep them cycling because they thought that I just got to do one little prayer, one little fast, one little come against. They didn't realize that this thing is so heavy rooted in the family. They got to keep chiseling at it and keep chiseling at it and keep chiseling. They thought it was just a one and done type of thing. And so and so because we were able to release some of the demons that was associated with this strong man spirit, but the rest of them was able to keep their territory because they just prayed and fasted a couple of times and when stuff wasn't working. Working, they lift their foot up off the gas. They just came to the prayer line a couple of times, and then when things, the all hell was still breaking loose in their life, they went on back to the things they used to do. So now we were able to re- release some of the demons that were over here, but most of us got to stay because we knew they was gonna let, they was gonna ease up off the gas in a little while. They, they didn't realize that that one thing that got let in was a strong man spirit that gave ruling to a legion, and a legion is defined from six to six thousand spirits. And they, 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 they multiply in your life like a Pringles can. And so maybe your couple of months of doing right, living right, you got top of the can gone. But it was still layered down like a Pringles can. You had to keep going to get all those, all those, the whole legion up out of there. And they stopped. And they got weary. And they went back. And they begin to agree with the things of old. And they get, begin to, to curse again. They begin to do all the things again. And, and, and so that gave us the right to come back and stack ourselves back up in their life. But as some of them have kept working, they didn't see nothing happening. They did not see nothing letting up. The death was still all in the air, blinding them, but they kept working. For God I live, for God I die. I may have felt fall to, I fell today and I did a sin, but I got right back up and I repented. And then I fell again in two months and I got back up when I repented. And I joined the prayer line even when I was disappointed. And I got on my knees and prayed even when I was sad. And I was able to Shabbat the Lord even when I didn't get the promotion. And they kept walking and they kept living. Nothing was changing. Nothing was happening. But they was attacking the root of the situation. And when the dust settled, they looked around three years later, three months later. I don't know how long. But I don't know how big the strong man is in your life or your your bloodline but however long three months three years three three decades i don't know how long but they looked around and they realized my god everything has fallen down everything has loosed its grip on my life everything has become dust unto my feet because i kept moving in the things of the lord father i pray that you would help us to be soldiers warriors Father, help us to not just think the winning battle is enough, but teach us how to war so that we can break some things for real. Teach us how to war. Because, Lord, sometimes the enemy will make will, will deceive us and make us think that we've broken something off of our life only for us to get in pride thinking that we could go dance around that thing and we end up slipping all the way back in. But help us be sober. And understand, the enemy has always been and will always be out for blood. But we come by the blood that's more powerful than anything. The enemy is not a rival of God, because if he was a rival, that would make him an equal. He is not an equal of God. God has no equals. He has no rivals. He is what he is. He is the only true 
and living God. He is more powerful than anything that you could ever think of. He is what he is. And so, Father, we thank you that we are on the majority side. We are on the winning side. But, Father, I ask in this season that you teach your children how to war, not how to fight, but how to war. Father God, so that we can begin to overturn what the enemy has planted on this earth, what the enemy has planted in these families, what the enemy has planted in our minds, what the enemy has planted, Father God, making it seem like this is what it's supposed to be when it's not. Because, Father, after further studying, understanding that it was not all what most people in the old church used to think, we'll just get our treasures in heaven, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just endure the, 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 the adversity and the, and the beatings and the oppression and our treasure is up in heaven. No, the devil is alive. My treasure is here because you said my kingdom come that will be done on earth. Your whole plan was to have your kingdom here on earth so that we can live here the way you have, the, the way they have in heaven for us to bring it down here. I, 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 I know there's treasure stored up there, but I got to live here how you have declared and decreed, how you written out in your word. I don't want to live here broke. I don't want to live here. Sickness whittling me. I can't even get out of the bed. I can't even walk off right at all. I don't want to live here. My mind is bound up. I can't even think. Of, I don't have no peaceful day because my mind is tormented. I don't want to live here where you said your kingdom is supposed to be on this earth. I want to live in kingdom citizenship. So, Father, we thank you for the wisdom that will be poured out in these last hours in this last quarter, in these last days. Father God, we thank you for the overflow of wisdom. We don't ask you for money. We don't ask you for, for these things that we can get as a byproduct of having the wisdom and the understanding of who we are in you. We thank you, Father God, that as we understand who we are in you, we understand what is our birthright, what is our citizenship right to have. So, Father, we thank you, Lord God, that as we continue to press in, especially she became, as we're ending Proverbs, and we're going right into the next book that you told that we're going to read, and we're going to end up reading 12 books by the time we count down to the New Year, we will have 12 of the 66 books read, and we will continue to fast and continue to pray. And I believe, Father, that some lies are going to break out like never before, that some turnaround and some blood lies are going to come forth like never before, that the budding of your people is going to arise like never before, that chains are going to break like never before, that eagles are going to soar like never before, that what they thought it was a chicken, they will understand, I, I thought that I was supposed to be on this ground, but my wingspan from tip to tip is over 30 feet, I'm supposed to be flying above the mountaintop, I thank you God, that deliverance is not always having to be laying hands on, but through knowledge the just shall be delivered. So I prophesy over this prayer line, Father God, that through knowledge your people will be delivered. That when I log on social media or I run into them, Father God, as I'm walking in the store or as I'm doing life, I will see that the hand of God and that the knowledge of God has delivered them. That everything that had become a shackle, a chain, bondage in their life will have to release its grip in the name of Jesus. What I know is possible because I've seen it with my own eyes. It will have to release its grip by the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord God, that the work that they do, their children won't even have to fight this hard. Holy Spirit, help me. I thank you that the work that we do, our children won't have to fight this hard. I thank you, Father God, that the work that we do, our children will not have to bear these burdens. They will not have to fight these battles. They will not have to war this hard. They will be taught how to sustain and maintain what we already broke through. So, Father God, we give you glory. Father God, we give you honor. And, Father God, we give you praise. And we seal this under the blood because we know the blood of Jesus it still works. So, Father God, you be glorified in our life. And we will not withhold one testimony, Father God, when you do these things. As you roll these things out, we won't withhold one testimony from you, Father God, because we'll be sure that you get all of the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I will see you all next Monday at 6 a.m. Have a great day. Uh, she became, we are on chapter 27 in Proverbs.
uh, read the easy first and then come right back and read the King James Version and then 28 tomorrow. 